Daniel died on December 20th, 2021, alone in his apartment with only his beloved cat Muldoon at his side. Daniel was a very solitary man, happiest when he could be alone. When I first met him, he still had three cats. Tony, who Daniel said was about 300 years old, and Noodle and her brother Muldoon, who were born on Daniel's doorstep about 12 years ago. Those cats were his reason for living. They were what gave him the courage he needed to recover from two above-the-knee amputations. He was always looking forward to going home to be with them. I really think if it had not been for them, he might have considered suicide. There were times that Daniel would call and ask me to get cat food or cat treats. Temptations were their favorite. He was always more concerned that his cats would be happy and well-fed than he was for himself. Daniel was an incredibly gifted musician, playing the guitar, guitar as he would say, singing and even composing his own songs. He admitted that maybe he became a little addicted to owning many of them, although he knew he didn't need them. He would often tell me that if there was someone at church who needed a guitar or wanted to learn to play, he would give them a guitar, provided they would play in church as well. Unfortunately, I never got any takers on that. When I first knew Daniel, he was a very aggressive and angry person, and that was before he lost his legs. He was dependent on someone to help him with grocery shopping and laundry and getting from one place to the other, but he was also very proud and had always been a free spirit, enjoying life and friends, and so it must have been really hard for him to always have to ask for help. But as the years went on and I came to know Daniel a little better, I could appreciate him more and more. It got to where sometimes he would call me and say, how are you? Of course, I thought he was calling because he needed something. But it was really just to say hello and check in. Many times I would tell him, I really admire you. I, I don't know what I would do or how I would cope with all that has happened to you. Daniel's mother, Ava, lives in Puerto Rico, as do three half-sisters and two brothers. I know he called his mom at least once a day and sometimes two or three, but he had no communication with his siblings by his choice. He seemed very angry whenever I would venture a question about his family. Oh, but he loved Puerto Rico. And I know how he longed for the day when he could go back to that lovely island, but it never happened. So I prejudged his family, assuming that they didn't care about him at all. How wrong I was. When I spoke with him about Daniel's unexpected passing, two of his sisters and his brother immediately made plans to come to Marshalltown. Again, prejudging, I thought maybe it was because they wanted to see what he had, if there was anything of value. Hmm. Wrong again. God keeps sending me the same message over and over, and I still haven't quite gotten it. It would have been so easy to simply have Daniel cremated and send the ashes to Puerto Rico. Or maybe at most send one sibling to receive them. But they arrived on Thursday, took a taxi from Des Moines Airport, it cost $142, stayed at a hotel until Tuesday, rented a truck from U-Haul because it was cheaper than renting a car. I don't know what the three airline tickets cost, but it was a sacrifice. And I was so moved when I met them and heard stories about the Daniel that they knew and loved. 
Daniel had changed a lot since they had seen him. One of his sisters, Tina, had a picture of Daniel, a Daniel that I could never have imagined, laughing, clowning, young and handsome. They told me they had wanted him to come and live with them, but he wouldn't even consider it. And I can believe that. The saddest part of this whole story is not that Daniel died alone or that Muldoon had to find a new home, but rather that Daniel never let himself realize how truly beloved he was. He just shut everyone out and didn't let himself be loved. There's a series on Netflix called Afterlife with Ricky Gervais. He's a recent widower who is angry at the whole world because he lost his beautiful and loving wife to cancer. In a touching scene at the cemetery, a widow tells him, if I went back and changed one thing I didn't like, I might lose something that that bad thing eventually took me to. You may not like living much, but you make the world a better place. Don't give up. It would be such a waste. I consider it a privilege to have had the opportunity to know and serve Daniel. Hopefully, I have another advocate in heaven pulling for me. Now he knows, as all who go before us that God's plan for each one of us is absolutely perfect.